Hockey is back, guys. So for the NHL season returning tonight, I wanted to give you my predictions for the 2019-2020 regular season. We're going to start off in the Western Conference with the last place team. So at number 15, I think it's going to be the LA Kings. I feel like they're definitely in a rebuild mode. Their core is aging. Kopitar, Doughty, Quick. I really don't see those guys getting better than they have been. I feel like, if anything, they're going to regress more. The rest of their team is pretty average. Really no stud prospects on their team right now. Turcotte probably you know, in a couple years, but... Really, I just don't see a lot there. So, although I think the Western Conference is kind of like more close in terms of the top teams and the bottom teams, I feel like LA is probably that last place team. Number 14, the Minnesota Wilds. This might come as a shock to some people, but I feel like they're probably the worst team in the Central. And because I feel like the Central Division is so much stronger than the Pacific, I think it means Minnesota is going to get a bunch more losses this year. As well, obviously, they lost Granlin last year for Fiala, which I felt like was definitely a downgrade. Uh, the Nauta trade, I think, was kind of even. They brought in Zuccarello, but still, I feel like they're a kind of just average team and maybe finally kind of finishing lower in the stains will actually help them get a top pick. I don't think they've ever picked like in the top three and actually start to turn around and become a true contender opposed to always just somewhere in the middle. Number 13 of the Anaheim Ducks, another team that I, I don't know, they're kind of like in a limbo. I'd say that I'd probably call it more of a retool than a rebuild just because they already have so many young players. Sam Steele's in the team this year, Troy Terry, Andre Cash, if he can stay healthy, is a very good young player. Kel's still pretty young. I think really the only old guy on that team is Getzlav, who is still a decent player. So I think they're going to be okay. But I feel like the rest of the teams in the Western Conference have gotten better, where Anaheim sort of just stayed the same. So next up, number 12, we have the Vancouver Canucks. Obviously, maybe big trade in the summer for JT Miller. Give up a first round pick, but. I don't think it's going to be enough, even with the sign of Tyler Myers, Quinn Hughes playing the whole season. Just looking at their roster, I don't think it's quite good enough to be a playoff team. I think there's a lot of better teams in the West. So Vancouver, unfortunately, on the outside looking in, they'll be competitive for sure, but I don't think they're quite going to make it. And the same goes for the next team here, number 11, that's Chicago Blackhawks. I think bringing in Robin Leonard is a really good move for them, especially with Crawford's health. But looking at their defense, it's pretty average, especially with Keith and Seabrook getting up there in age. Offense, they have some really good guys in Kane to bring at. Tays especially with the bound year. Strom looked really good on Chicago. After that though, there's really not a lot there. So I feel like they're another team that'll be competitive, but not quite good enough to make the playoffs. Now next number 10, we have the Arizona Coyotes. I kind of feel bad for them. It's been so long since they made the playoffs. And I think it's another year the same. Bringing in Phil Kessel is going to be huge. That's why, you know, they're making a push for the playoffs here. There are only two spots out, but I don't think it's going to be quite enough. If you look at like after their top six, it's pretty average. Their defense, I really like Eichmann Larson, but the rest of the guys are just kind of okay. Maybe Chikrin, if he can stay healthy, can have a big year. Goaltending, Ranta has health issues as well, but Comper, if he can step, step up, I think is a decent goalie as well. They just picked up Eric Comrie off waivers, which I thought was a very solid move for them. So again, I think they're going to have a good year. Like not making the playoffs doesn't mean you had a terrible year, but I feel like it's going to be another year on the outside looking in for them. Now next up at number nine, we have the Edmonton Oilers. This one's probably controversial. I think a lot of people assume the Oilers are going to do even worse than this. I personally, though, think that they'll be in the running for a playoff spot, but they're going to fall short simply because I think McDavid is the best player in the world, and I think he's angry. Like, they haven't made the playoffs for the last two years now, and I think, honestly, he's just going to go off. Kucherov kind of went off for Tampa last year. I feel like McDavid's going to do something similar, put up, like, 120 points, just have an unreal year. Maybe Dreisel does the same thing, and basically those two guys are going to get Edmonton as close as they can, I feel like it's still not going to be enough to make the playoffs. Just because it's basically those two guys, Nuge, Clef Bomb, some other guys are good players, but McDavid and Dreisler can do everything they can, but I feel like there's just not enough depth on that team to really, you know, breach that gap and make the playoffs. So a decent season for Edmonton, I guess you could call it, but I think they're going to come up short. And moving on now to the playoff teams, at number eight, I have the Winnipeg Jets. A lot of people are writing them off already because they lost Tyler Myers, they lost Jacob Truba. Looks like they may or may not lose Bufflin. I really didn't consider that too much in this prediction. More so just Truba and Myers. Now they did bring in Pionk, who I think is a decent, like, second, third pairing guy um, into that decor as well. They just got Dalstrom, I think, off of waivers. But I feel like, honestly, they signed Lina, they signed Connor. That offensive group, especially with Hellbeck and Nett, I think is good enough to make the playoffs. And they have Sammy Nuku, who I think is a really good young defenseman, uh, who should be making the team. I think he's injured right now, but I think a lot of people don't know about him. He should be a very solid player, probably in their top four, honestly. So Winnipeg, I still think, gets in there, even though they're just squeaking in at number eight. I think they're still making it. Number seven, we have the Colorado Avalanche. A lot of people are actually picking them to like win the Central, which is definitely too high for me. I think they're a good team, but still lacking a little bit of depth on offense. Defensively, they really don't have a number one D-man. Like Johnson's not bad. Uh, Gerard's not bad. Makar is young. And I feel like if Makar has an awesome year, he's probably still not going to be as good as Barry was last year. So I think they definitely still lost there in training away Barry, even though Kadri's a nice pickup. Uh, Grubauer as well. We've never actually seen him be the starter for an entire season. So I'm always skeptical of goalies like that because so often it just doesn't work out. You look at guys like Brian Elliott, Carter Hutton. Uh, they're 
good backups or good kind of timeshare goalies when they're in a tandem, you give them the starter role and just not quite as good. So time will tell, I guess, the Avalanche. But I do see them making the playoffs. Now moving on to number six at the San Jose Sharks. So they're number six in the standings because they're the third best Pacific team. But I actually think they're going to have the least amount of points of a playoff team. The Sharks obviously have a great decor. Brent Burns, Eric Carlson. I think Braun's still on the team. Or sorry, Dylan. I'm trying to remember which one they traded. Dylan's still on the team. And Edward Vlasic. So a pretty nasty top four. Jones, I think, is a decent goalie. Their top six forwards are solid. After that, they might have like one of the worst bomb sixes in the NHL. So luckily for them, I think that their decor and the rest of their top, the top six forwards are going to carry them to the playoffs. But I think not having depth, especially with injuries and stuff, bad results for that during the regular season. So Sharks make it, but just barely. Uh, now number five of the Vegas Golden Knights. I think they're one of the stronger teams in the Pacific Division. There's not too many of them. Honestly, there's only like two teams I think are sure bets to make it in the Pacific, Vegas, and the next team, which you can probably figure out. Uh, Vegas, of course. Solid team. I think they really haven't lost anything. So their four groups good. Defense really a team without a number one, but they have a ton of just solid defensive depth. Fleur, I think, is an elite goaltender in net for them. So no, no reason why Vegas shouldn't be back in the playoffs for the third straight year, which is kind of awesome for an expansion team. Number four, I have the Dallas Stars. I'm actually really high on the Dallas Stars this year. I think they made awesome moves, bringing in Pavelski for free, as well they got Perry and Sakara on super cheap deals. If Perry's even like you know, I don't know, 35 point guy with the deal he got. That's still a great addition to that forward group. If Sakara can stay healthy, great addition to the defense. I think Heiskanen is just going to be even better this year. Uh, just kind of improving on that rookie season. Ben Bishop, I think, is going to prove he's one of the top five goalies in the league. So very high on Dallas this year. We'll see if they can finish in that top four spot I have them in. Number three, we have the St. Louis Blues, obviously defending Stanley Cup champions. They're another team, really haven't lost anything. Uh, most of that core is still there. They actually brought in Justin Falk, so they could be even better. And like, if you don't count the first half of the season, St. Louis was the best team in the league last year. I think better than Tampa Bay even. I'd have to like do all the math or whatever, but definitely best in the West. So if they can just continue that even somewhat, they're making the playoffs for sure. And really, no reason to think that they don't. So that's why they're at the number three spot. So number two now with the Calgary Flames winning the Pacific Division. Like I mentioned, them in Vegas, honestly, in my eyes, are the only two surefire bets to make it in the playoffs in the Pacific Division. The rest of the teams, there's just tons of weird things that could think could happen. So Calgary and Vegas are my only playoff locks in Pacific. Now, Calgary did make a bad trade, I thought, in the summer. Neil for Lucic. I feel like Neil definitely has a much better chance to bounce back, especially if they do have on McDavid's wing. There's pretty much... It's pretty much a certainty he's going to bounce back and at least do a little bit better. But the, besides that, I think the Flames core is still there. Awesome top line, Goudreau, Monaghan, and Lindholm. Kachuk's a very good player. I think Riddick showed that he's actually a pretty good starting goaltender. Talbot as the backup for some insurance. Their defense is really solid too. Giordano coming off a career year. So no reason to think Calgary should slow down. And finally, at the number one spot in the West, I actually have the Nashville Predators. I think if you look at their team through the lineup... They're so solid. I don't. I didn't like to trade a Subban, but even with trading away Subban, I think they're still a very good team. Pecorine, I think, if he's not a top five goalie, he's close. Saros, I think, is one of the better backups in the league. Roman Yossi is probably one of the most underrated defensemen in the league. Ellis is going to be playing on that top pair with him. And without Subban, I think he's going to be getting some extra time. Maybe it's a big year for him, just having that extra ice time. Forward group, I mean, they brought in Granlin. They signed Duchesne. I think Cal Turst, their third line center. Like, it's pretty insane what they got going on over there. Just... So much depth throughout the lineup. And I think for me, the regular season, it's all about depth. I feel like, you know, you can't have that top line that carries you, but injuries are going to happen at some point during an 82-game season. And I think that's where the depth sort of shines. That's why I think the Predators will be finishing first in the West. So moving on now, guys, to the Eastern Conference. Last place, number 16, it's pretty obvious. It's the Ottawa Senators. I feel like if anyone doesn't have Ottawa as a last place team, I don't know. I'm pretty sure Ottawa, they're never going to say it. I'm pretty sure they want to get last place and have the best shot to get Alexis Lafreniere. If you look at their team, it's like Thomas Shabbat's a really good player on the team. Brady Kachuk's not bad. Colin White's not bad. There's not a lot there, though. Like, I feel like if you follow the NHL at all, it's pretty obvious why Ottawa should be finishing last in the East. Now, second to last in the East is my favorite team, the Detroit Red Wings. I'd like them to finish a bit higher. Well, one part of me would. The other part of me would like them to finish even lower just to have best odds being Lafreniere. I'm, I'm pretty high on Lafreniere. I think he's going to be sick. So, I look at our team, and I feel like we probably are better than Ottawa, and that's about it in the East. Larkin's a really good player. We, we probably have one of the worst defenses, though, in the league. And, I mean, we have, like, decent forwards, but no real stars outside of Larkin, maybe Mantha. Goaltending's pretty average, like Howard, but he's not, like, an elite goaltender. So it just makes sense for us, I think, second last there in the league. Number 14, this is kind of a tough one. I have the Buffalo Sabres. Honestly, after Detroit and Ottawa, though, I feel like any of these teams can make the playoffs. It's just, it's so tight in the NHL. There's, like, so much parity. 
it's so hard to call. So I have Buffalo. The main reason, honestly, being goaltending. I didn't like Carter Hutton as a starter last year. And I feel like Allmark's a pretty average backup. Now their defense did get a lot better. They traded for Montour, traded for Miller. I feel like Dallin should be even better this year. Still in the high skin in. But there's just not a lot on offense, especially after that kind of top three players there. You got Eichel, you got Reinhardt, you got Skinner. And that's about it. Like, there's really not much after that. Maybe Casey Middlestad has a big year. I didn't really see much from him last year to kind of show that would be the case. So, I feel like, too, Skinner getting that big contract. I feel like he had something to play for last year. That's why he went off so much at the beginning of the year. Tailed off at the end. I feel like Skinner is going to regress a bit. So, I feel like unless Eichel goes god mode, Dallin goes god mode, McKenzie next, Bobby Orr. Buffalo, probably not a playoff year for them. Number 13, this one, this was tough. I think the New York Islanders is going to be number 13. I really feel like Robin Leonard slash just Grice there had both career years in goaltending, and that's the main reason why they made the playoffs. So with Leonard gone now, they brought Varlamov in, who I feel is a pretty even trade. The thing is, like I said, they had career years, so the chances of them duplicating that I feel is very, very small. And the rest of the teams in the East got a lot better, whereas the Islanders pretty much stay the same. So I think it's going to be a tough year in the East, a bloodbath. And unfortunately for Islanders fans, I feel like they're not going to be quite good enough to make the playoffs. Now, number 12, we actually have the other New York team, the New York Rangers. So I have them on, on top of the Islanders in the standings. Just to not offend any of the New York fans, we'll say they did tie in points though, just for whatever reason, the Rangers are at 12. Obviously they got a lot better this year, signing Panarin in free agency, making that trade for Truba. They also made the trade for Adam Fox, as well as they drafted Capo Caco. I think Krasov's in the AHL right now, but he could definitely get called up with some injuries, and I think he's a pretty good player, honestly. So, a lot going right with the Rangers. I think though, they're not quite that playoff team yet. Panarin's a good player, I don't think he kind of is the guy that's going to move the needle from non-playoff team to playoff team. Lungfist. We'll see what happens there, of course. I, he's a, he was an elite goaltender. I feel like he's definitely on a bit of a decline. For me, the biggest concern with the Rangers is their defense. After Shea and True, but it's a lot of younger guys who really aren't that experienced. Guys like Fox, um, guys like D'Angelo, guys like Hijack. I think Stahl might be in that top six, who obviously is kind of on the way out of his career. So I feel like the Rangers will have a decent year. It'll be a fun year, but not going to be good enough for the playoffs. And moving on from the New York teams, guys. I remember 11 at the Montreal Canadiens. I feel like they'll be a decent team, a competitive team, but... Some of the two New York teams, just not quite good enough to make the playoffs. I feel like Price should probably have a better year than he had last year. I think their defense is all right, and they have some young guys who maybe can prove themselves. Offensively, I'm, I'm curious to see if Domi can have just as good as a year he had last year. That was really impressive. Jatara, I'm also curious to see kind of how he continues to play. I know Suzuki made the team. Kokaniemi, they're probably looking to have a breakout year, but just looking through their lineup, I feel like it's not enough for me to be a playoff team. There's just so many other teams that have better rosters. So Montreal, good team. Competitive team, probably going to be a little bit on the outside looking in for the playoffs. And next year, number 10, we have the Philadelphia Flyers. They, of course, made the big signing of Kevin Hayes, who last I checked is apparently playing first line center between Giroux and Voracek. I'm not sure if that's true or not. I feel like it should be Couturier, but uh, regardless, I think Flyers are a good team. They got good offense. Uh, they have pretty solid defense. Carter Hart, I think, is a good goalie, obviously. He's like the youngest goalie in a long time to be a full-fledged starter, which is awesome. Uh, I just think, for me... There's better teams in the East, so they'll be a like competitive team. They're finishing 10th or a couple spots out, but uh, they're not going to be quite good enough. They probably missed by like four or five points. And next year, guys, number nine, just missing the playoffs at the New Jersey Devils. And this would honestly be pretty crazy if it happened, because imagine if they had, say, two extra points and they made the playoffs and Hall resigned with them. But because they were short a point or two, he decides to go to UFA. Hopefully for the Devils fans, that doesn't happen. I'm hoping, you know, they make the playoffs, they keep Hall, or at least one of the two, right? But um, I think, honestly, they're probably going to finish ninth. Obviously, Hall's on a contract here. He's going to go off, assuming he doesn't get injured. Jack Hughes. I think a lot of people are underrating Jack Hughes. Um, trying to say, you know, the caller's going to go to Kako. It's going to go to McCarr. It's going to go to Quinn Hughes. Jack Hughes is the first overall pick for a reason. I think he's going to have a big year, especially if he can get some ice time with Taylor Hall. Obviously, the trade for Subban I thought was amazing. I think they honestly fleeced Nashville. They had that cap space to work with. And they, they utilized it. And I think bringing in Subban for pretty much nothing was awesome. And sort of on that same note, I felt like they really made a great trade with Vegas. Bringing in Nikita Gusev, who is coming from the KHL. So it's kind of hard to predict. But I think he could be a good player for them. Now, the big concern with the Devils is actually their goaltending. Which is kind of the opposite of a few years ago. Where they had an elite goalie in Corey Schneider. But nothing else on the team. Now, the rest of the team is pretty solid. But Corey Schneider is looking pretty shaky. I actually think Mackenzie Black was going to earn the starter role during the season. And sort of similar to Carter Hart be like good enough for the Devils can be competitive and just about make the playoffs but not quite so that's why the Devils there at number nine definitely I think could be a fun team to watch this year which hasn't been the case for the Devils uh you know in the past so number eight now I, this is kind of like my I don't know dark horse pick I have the Columbus Blue Jackets so I actually think Columbus still makes the playoffs this year I think if you looked at them last year like the core of that team 
was solid enough to be in a playoff spot before they added Duchesne, Dezingle, all those guys at the deadline. Now they lost Panarin. Nyquist, I think, can come in and at least fill Panarin's shoes somewhat. Panarin put up, I forget, let's just say 80 points. Nyquist can put up 60, so, you know, a bit of the same production. Now, goaltending-wise, they do lose Bobrovsky, but they got Corby Salah and Merzla Kins, who are both two good young goalies. I feel like between the two, someone's going to rise to the occasion and help the team make the playoffs. Again, they're my dark horse team. I feel like they're honestly going to find a way to squeak in the number eight spot, and maybe if they play Tampa again, whoever it is, they can pull off another miracle, but... I think Columbus sneaks in the playoffs. Dubois on a contract year. I think it's going to be a huge year for him as well. So we'll keep an eye on that. At number seven, though, speaking of Columbus, I have Florida Panthers, who Bobrovsky just joined. I feel like Florida was a very solid team last year, basically only missing goaltending. They add one of the best goalies in the world to that team. I don't think they lost anything last year. I think they actually added Strawman as well on defense. No reason to think they don't make that jump from whatever they finished, 10th or 11th, to the playoffs. So pretty self-explanatory. Barkov, everyone was saying, the most underrated player for so long. I don't think that's any longer the case. Huber Doe might honestly be. 92 points last year. No one mentions it. So Florida, I think, could have a big year and get back in the playoffs. Number six would be the Carolina Hurricanes. I think Carolina's a very good team. They probably have, honestly, some of the most best depth in the league in terms of defense. Even after trading away Justin Falk. Like, if you look at their defensive core, it's kind of insane. They got Slavin, Pesci, Sign Gardner. Uh, they have Hayden Fleury. Jake Bean could make the team, honestly. I think they have a couple guys I'm forgetting right now who I, I shouldn't be. TVR. Uh, Dougie Hamilton, like they have so many guys on defense. Like their defense is set. Goaltending wise, obviously I'm a big fan of Peter Mrazek. Can he do it again for them though? McElhinney was honestly the starter a lot of time last year, so it'll be kind of interesting to see what happens there. I think James Reimer's the new backup. And then offensively, I think Sebastian Aho, very good player. Uh, they of course brought in Dezingle, they trade for Halla. Their offense really should be even better. Svechikov, I think, can take a big step this year. So I think they're a playoff team. If they end up finishing a bit higher than this, a bit lower than this, wouldn't shock me, but I have them at the sixth spot right now. Number five with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Kind of similar to Edmonton, except a bit better. I feel like you just can't bet against Krause and Melk, and those two guys should be good enough to just make you make the playoffs, especially with the rest of their team. Edmonton has McDavid, Dreisel, that's it. Pittsburgh has Krause, Malkin, Latang. They got a better goalie, I think, in Murray. They got Galchenyuk now, which definitely a downgrade from Kessel, but Galchenyuk has the tools. If he's playing with Malkin or Crosby, I think he could have a big year. Uh, they have Gensel. They have a lot of guys there, so... I think Pittsburgh should still be a playoff team this year. Honestly, I'm never going to bet against Sidney Crosby. Uh, next up, number four, the Boston Bruins. Now, even though I have Boston fourth in the conference, I actually think they're the third best team in the entire league. Similar to last year, I feel like that goes to Tampa, Toronto, and Boston. So it kind of sucks that they're all in the same conference. Not only that, the same division, but really, if you look at the rosters, I think those are for sure the three best teams. So Boston made the Stanley Cup final last year. I don't think they've lost anything aside from a couple rentals. Charlie McAvoy is younger, getting better. Same goes for Carlo. Charlie's like 42 years old now and still a decent defenseman. I think Tuka Rask last year showed why he is considered an elite goaltender. Uh, he definitely has flashes of brilliance. And then offensively, that top line, Marchand, Bergeron, and Pasternak is probably the top line in the league. Close between that line and, of course, the Avs line of Lance Kovacin and Rantanen. So the reason why Boston shouldn't be one of the top teams in the league again this year. Now, number three, already kind of mentioned it. I have the Toronto Maple Leafs. I honestly think the Leafs are going to be even better this year. They got Marner back. The trade for Barry, I thought, was an awesome trade. The way I look at that trade, they essentially downgraded a little bit from Kadri to Kerfoot. And to do that, they brought in Tyson Barry, which is unreal. I think he's such a good offensive defenseman. And on that team with that stacked forward group of Matthews, Tavares, Marner, um, Nylander, even Riley, I guess, as a D partner, I feel like Barry's just going to go off, especially too on a contract year. Anderson, I think, is a very good goalie as well. They got some young players making the team. Sandin, Lodgren, uh, maybe even a guy like Trevor Moore could step up. So... I think Toronto's going to have an awesome year, honestly. Again, similar to Boston, I had them third in the conference, but actually second in the league. And next year, number two, finishing first in the Metro Division, I have the Washington Capitals. Honestly, it was close for me between them and Pittsburgh. I feel like the Metro is just so wide open this year. Any team in that division could make the playoffs, whereas the Atlantic, you have like the three powerhouses, the two teams at the bottom, Detroit and Ottawa. The rest of the teams are somewhere in the middle. So the Metro should be a lot of fun to kind of follow. For me, Washington finishing first. Ovechkin's going to put up 50 goals. Backstrom's going to be on a good year, I think, on his contract year. Same goes for Holtby and Nett. They've added a couple of guys. Really no reason to see why Washington just doesn't have another solid year. So, again, not really too much to say there. I think they're just the best team in the Metro, but the Metro's going to be a lot closer, I feel, than the Atlantic. And finally, number one, again, I think it's going to be the Tampa Bay Lightning. They potentially got better this year. Yes, they traded away JT Miller, but they brought in a first-round pick. They brought in Kevin Shankirk for pretty much nothing. Uh, they have young guys coming up into that lineup. I feel like Vasilevsky's locked up and looking like he might be the best goalie in the league. For me, it's him or Price. 
Sergeyev, I think, could honestly step up with the loss of Strawman. Tampa Bay is still a powerhouse. It's kind of insane to see them just consistently do it. Brain Point, obviously, they were able to keep. I know he is injured for a little bit at the start of the season, but their team is absolutely stacked. Even after losing Miller, even after losing Strawman, for me, it's not even close to who the best team is on paper in the NHL. So if they're the best team on paper, they probably should be the best team over 82 games, which is why I have Tampa Bay not only winning the East, but also the President's Trophy. So on that note, guys, I actually wanted to talk about some of the awards I think are going to happen. I don't think I've ever done this before, so I thought it'd be kind of cool make my predictions. I just said how I think Tampa's going to win the President's Trophy. Um, talking about some player awards, I feel like McKinnon will win the heart only because Colorado makes the playoffs and he finishes his second in points behind Connor McDavid who wins the Art Ross, as well as Connor McDavid wins the Ted Lindsay. Again, I feel like McDavid's playing a bit angry, just going to have an unreal year. Similar to Kucherov last year. Marisha Shard again goes to Ovechkin. I feel like he's going to get 50 plus. The dude's probably the greatest goal scorer the NHL's ever seen. Vesna this year, I think, goes to Ben Bishop. I honestly really like Dallas. I think they improve their defense. So with a better defense in front of them, as well as just a better team in front of them, he puts up better numbers. Uh, Norse Trophy. The Norse seems to be a trophy that they like to kind of circulate, give to a new defenseman every year. So I feel like the guy that's going to get it this year is Seth Jones. A very underrated defenseman. Um, potentially a top five defenseman in the league. The other four guys already won the Norse Trophy. So I feel like it's going to be Seth Jones' year. Especially if Columbus is competitive and vying for a playoff spot. There's going to be a lot of eyes on him. And probably a big reason for that will be Seth Jones' play. Um, Jack Adams here. I have John Tortorella. Again, Columbus is my dark horse. After losing Panarin Bobrovsky, you can kind of tempt to Shane in that as well. If Columbus does squeak into the playoffs, I feel like it probably goes to Tortorella. They always like to give it to kind of the underdog story. Um, Calder, I think, goes to Jack Hughes, like I mentioned. I feel like a lot of people, I would say underrating him, but sort of just doubting him and like looking at other players. I think Jack Hughes is sick. If he can find himself on the line with Hall, even without Hall on his line, I feel like he's going to be awesome this year on the Devils. Uh, the Selkie Trophy, this is definitely a definitely a biased pick, something I want to happen more than I think will happen, and that's Dylan Larkin getting the Selkie. Very good two-way game, if a lot of people don't realize that. If he has an awesome year this year, where he shows just kind of how good of a two-way player he is, and maybe the rest of the guys have already won it before, just have average years, like the O'Reilly's, the Bergeron's, Kopitar's, maybe Larkin can somehow squeak out a Selkie, I think that'd be really cool. Now the Cup winner, so the Stanley Cup final, I don't think Tampa Bay's going to make it back. I actually think it's going to be Toronto Maple Leafs, versus the Dallas Stars. As I already mentioned, I really like both those teams this year. And winning the 2020 Stanley Cup, half of you watching are going to love this. I have the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think it could be this year. Like, I'm looking at their team, and I just think it is stacked throughout. They have one of the best top sixes in the NHL. Their defense with Riley and Barry should be producing so many points. Anderson and Nett. Honestly, I feel like it's Toronto's year. So, we'll see if they prove me right or not. And now, guys, we're actually going to go into the game and just see what the EA Sim predicted. I know that EA actually tweeted out their Sim, but... I don't trust that one. I feel like they might make it happen how they want to happen opposed to what actually happened. So this is the first sim I did, and I'm going to show you guys the results. First thing here actually is the draft lottery. So Arizona misses the playoffs, but jumps up to first overall from 7th last, getting Lafreniere. Dallas, similar to when they got Heisken in, jumps up from 9th to 2nd. I don't think there's any way Dallas misses the playoffs this year, but we'll see. And then Anaheim, another big jump from 10th to 3rd. Ottawa does finish last. feel really bad for them as they pick 4th overall. Now luckily for them, there's kind of the top four this year, Lafreniere, Byfield, Raymond, and Holtz. So as long as you're in the top four, you should be okay. So next year, I just want to show you guys the playoff tree as well as the regular season standings and the awards for this year. So I guess we'll do regular season first. I just took over Toronto because I feel like they'll probably not be making too many trades this year because they're so close to the salary cap. And I did let the computers make trades. Um, as you can see, Toronto actually finished really high. They won the President's Trophy. Yeah, 115 points. St. Louis there, really good year. Philly had an awesome year. I mean, they won the Stanley Cup. I totally forgot to mention that it was on the screen though I don't think Philly makes the playoffs if they, win the if they win the Stanley Cup that'd be pretty crazy completely glossed over that that's my bad Florida Boston Pittsburgh so you got six teams that are 100 plus Winnipeg still has a really solid year now for this Winnipeg did have Dustin Bufflin so keep that in mind Vegas Calgary Tampa Washington so pretty similar to our picks Edmonton squeaks in I know the sim really likes McDavid and Dreisaitl LA making the playoffs this would be a shocker if that happens Chicago misses Carolina makes it in Devils just missed, which is what we predicted. Montreal Islanders, Rangers. I think Ottawa finished last. They have Nashville there, 69 points. And Nashville has too much talent, I think, to finish that low. Minnesota, Columbus, again, I know is a bit of a risky pick by me squeaking it in. Detroit, Buffalo, Vancouver. So the rest of that kind of makes sense. So we'll take a look at the playoff tree now and just see who the Flyers went through to win the Stanley Cup. So first round, best of seven with Tampa. Imagine if Tampa loses again in the first round. Best of seven with the Penguins. That'd be a crazy series. Five games there with the Hurricanes. They actually beat the Calgary Flames there, sweeping them in the Stanley Cup Final. Uh, for me in the West, it's probably between Dallas and Calgary. So 
Uh, the fact Calgary makes it all the way to the Stanley Cup Final here, not a shock at all. The fact that Toronto and Tampa, though, both first round exits, even Boston as well, and Washington. So, honestly, the four teams in the East I would have picked to make it in the first round all lost, which I think is basically what happened last year in real life. So, I guess no shocker there. Um, awards, like I said, I just want to show you guys those. Team awards don't really matter. So, player awards, McDavid does win the Art Ross, as we predicted. Ovechkin, though, wins the Hart Trophy. Proveral there with the James Norris. That'd be a big bounce back year for him. I had him on fantasy last year. It's pretty average. Panarin gets the Lady Bing. I can see that happening. Kako with the Calder opposed to Hughes. We'll see what happens. Usually, actually, Hughes gets it in the Sim, too. So, that's kind of shocking. Uh, Giroux got the Con Smythe. Probably had an awesome playoff for Philly. Bennington gets the Vesna. Imagine that. Vesna falling out the Stanley Cup. That'd be pretty crazy. He also got the William M. Jennings. So, big year for him. Eckholm there. Bill Masterton. Edmonton coach gets Jack Adams. Uh, honestly, if Edmonton makes the playoffs, Tippett has a good chance to win the Jack Adams. Kopitar actually bounced back here, gets a Selkie. Ovechkin got the Ted Lindsay as well. Oh, I was, I, was, I was already saying as well, I assumed he got the Marisa Shard. It actually goes McDavid. So let's quickly go and check the points here and see like how many goals McDavid had, how many points he had. Tavares 105, Marner 103, Matthews 99. He had 50, Tavares had 52. How many goals did McDavid have? So as I'm predicting him having like an insane year, EA is as well. 109 points, 54 goals. It's a pretty crazy year there for McDavid. Tavares finished second in scoring, though. OV 50, 55 assists. So we have a playmaker year for him with 105. Marner, dry saddle. So, yeah, they definitely like kind of just those top lines of elite players working together. Malkin, Barzell having a huge year, 95 points. I actually drafted him in fantasy. I'm hoping Barzell can have a huge year here. McKinnon, kind of a slow year, 93. Aho, Panarin. Okay, so most of the guys we expect to be up there are up there in points. But... That's going to be it, guys, for this video. Love to hear from you on your thoughts, on my prediction as well, I guess, even the EA Sim. I know the one that they did, I think Boston won. Um, again, I, I don't know if I trust that one. This is the first one I did. And I feel like aside from LA making the playoffs, most of this seemed pretty reasonable. Even the Flyers winning the Stanley Cup, honestly, isn't too crazy to me. Like, the NHL is just that close, that competitive. Pretty much anything can happen. So, hopefully, you guys did enjoy this video. Hopefully, you're excited for hockey tonight. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you guys haven't yet, please subscribe. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.